I showed these images in past videos, and people seem to like them. So I decided to show them again as background images for this video. However, after I get done talking, I do have some new video clips to show you. I made this video to let men know worldwide that they are not alone. When people share their pain, it can help others who are experiencing similar pain. You think that people will not understand. That they will call you a loser, weak, stupid. Say it is all your fault, when deep down inside, you know it is not. It was just the hand you were dealt. Situations you had no control over. You do not know how to fix it. How to make life better for yourself. Many men worldwide are in a similar situation. And there are millions of different reasons why. This includes both single and married men. 30% of men in the United States are virgins or close to being virgins when they turn 30. And 15% of men in the United States are in sexless marriages. The men in the following videos are from the United States, Canada, and Australia. However, the last video shows that there is hope. It is extreme. Vietnam is one of the cheapest countries to live in. There are some United States Americans living on 600 United States dollars a month in Vietnam, and this includes food, rent and transportation. I understand that in some countries, 600 United States dollars a month can be hard to attain. Maybe the following will help. There are United States men living all over the world who are making a living in the industry of computer programming and data analysis. As long as you have a good internet connection and know some type of computer programming, you might be able to do the same thing. And they say that you do not need a college degree. Plus, these professions and many others also need support staff. Gathering information. Downloading and organizing the data. There are many different kinds of support staff. Thus, being support staff might be a way to start. And many of these professions will allow you to work over the internet. And this means that you can work from any country in the world. There are hundreds of different areas related to computer programming. Such as data analysis, data mining and cloud services. Plus, Vietnam is looking for anyone with some type of skill. So if you have some kind of computer skill, you might be able to get a job working in Vietnam. This is what a man from Argentina did. And after he moved to Vietnam, he got married to a Vietnamese woman. He said that he grew up in the farmland part of Argentina and never dreamed that he would be living and working in Vietnam. Plus, Vietnam is doing a big push to get their people to learn English with an American accent. This is not the same as teaching English. What you are doing is helping people in other countries practice their English. If you learned English with a United States American accent, then you can tutor English, part-time, over the internet, and make about 500 United States dollars a month. If you do it full-time, then you can earn more. I know 500 United States dollars a month is not a lot of money, but it might be a start. Most of the time, the hardest part is getting a start. I have watched YouTube videos where people from the United States are living in Vietnam on 600 United States dollars a month. And a one-way plane ticket from the United States to Vietnam can be as little as 600 United States dollars. I have never done this, but I have watched many YouTube videos where men from the United States have done this, and used this as a way to start over in a new country. Other YouTube videos show United States men who are in their 60s. I will not get into the details of why many of these men have no money. However, they went to a website called Cambly, and started tutoring English over the internet, earning about 500 United States dollars a month. And after this was all set. Then they moved to the Philippines and married a beautiful Philippines woman. And most of these women are in their 20s. And all are very happy. The Philippines, Vietnam and many countries are family oriented. This means that most of these women date with a purpose. They want to get married and have children with a husband. And some of these couples started YouTube channels. However, for most men, it takes about 4 years before you can earn enough from YouTube to pay rent, food and all that stuff. For women, it takes 1 to 2 years. YouTube pushes women's channels a lot faster than they do men's channels. I just wanted to give you some ideas to help you get started. There are probably hundreds of ways to earn a living from the internet. And you will probably fail many times before you find something that works. But if you never try, you will never succeed. Here are the videos. I did not interview men for the first four years of my study. And it wasn't until a man looked at me one day after a book signing and said, I love what you have to say about shame. I'm curious why you didn't mention men. And I said, I don't study men. And he said, that's convenient. <laughs> and I said, why? And he said, because 
you say to reach out, tell our story, be vulnerable. But you see those books you just signed for my wife and my three daughters? I said, yeah. They'd rather me die on top of my white horse than watch me fall down. When we reach out and be vulnerable, we get the shit out of us. I'm 26 years old and never had a girlfriend. Today is my birthday, February 12th, and I would really appreciate it if you would all not mention or say to me, happy birthday, because it is not a happy birthday for me. And as a matter of fact, it has not been a happy birthday to me for years of my life now. I haven't had a happy birthday since I was a fucking kid. 27 years old, I've never had a girlfriend before, never dated anyone before, and um, it hurts me a lot on the inside because it feels like it's, ho it's holding me back in life because it makes me feel a lot lesser than other people. And me... Every cell in my body absolutely hates what I'm about to say and hates that it's true, but I have just seen it too many times, both with myself and in my surroundings, that what I'm about to say is entirely true and there's no fighting it anymore. In this day and age, in 2023 and over the last decade, it has become increasingly less reasonable for men to be a good dude to women. There is nothing I want more in this life than to have a good woman by my side and make her feel loved and valued and move out in the sticks and just build a little family and have have that but I'm telling you right now when like especially when I look into my own personal dating history every girl that I've been good to the handful of girls that I was straight up committed to and loyal and provided for them and made them feel loved and beautiful and cherished you want to be great you want to be a good guy you want to be in love but that's not what they want today bro you got to accept these facts I see thousands of men just crying and whining about how a woman broke her, your heart. Women will say, well, you just found the wrong, the wrong one. They are the wrong one. All of the good things about you, it can be one thing about you that she does not like or you don't have. And guess what? She's scrolling social media. She's scrolling Instagram. She's scrolling TikTok. And she's seeing other men with what you can't provide, bro. She's seeing other couples with what you can't provide, bro. And she's going to end the relationship. She's going to sabotage it because you can't provide what she wants, bro. And when they leave you and destroy the relationship, they know they're destroying you. They all want to be masculine. They all want to break hearts. Now you see why you got the passport, bros. Because they're not putting up with this. These men are out here enjoying their life in other countries where they are respected and loved. And then they can leave and then come back to this dump and then they go back again. They're not trying to fall in love because it's not possible to work. I know it sucks, bro. I know it hurts. I know her leaving hurts. A lot of you are going through that. I've been through it. Trust me, we all have, but you'll get through it. A lot of men trade sexual exclusivity for like a long-term partnership with a woman, you know, especially guys that don't have a lot of abundance of choice. They're like, I'll marry this girl. What happens is the thing that drives you to be ambitious is women. Men all over the world every day, no man, all men, invent, build, maintain society in pursuit of women. So once you take that availability away from him, that, that hunting availability, like the reward, the true primal reward, which is sex, 
you kind of die inside as a man. No, you can see that. You can see some guys can, who've been in a relationship or are married for years. They don't have that glow. They don't have that right. spark. A swarm of eager girls surrounds him, each hoping to quickly sell herself into matrimony. In a region where the female population significantly outnumbers the male, the competition is fierce, with some girls going to extreme lengths to secure a prospective groom. Under the open sky, some bold girls resort to daylight abduction, forcibly dragging unsuspecting men home for marriage. The scarcity of eligible bachelors has led some girls to go as far as offering dowries just to find a match. Without such incentives, it seems that the surplus of girls has left many overlooked and unwanted. The gender disparity has prompted the establishment of a grand bride market, specifically designed to facilitate the unions of these surplus girls. Each girl, meticulously adorned, anxiously awaits her turn in the market, aspiring to catch the eye of a potential suitor. Despite their beauty, many of these girls find that an entire day passes without a single inquiry, leaving them disheartened. In this relentless pursuit to secure a husband, some daring girls directly approach handsome young men, only to be met with swift rejection. Unfazed, they persist, grabbing onto the men's hands, desperately hoping to offer themselves in marriage. Yet even when a girl is willing to offer more than just her hand, the men fearing the unexpected consequences swiftly slip away. The scene unfolds with girls continuously seeking their next target, boldly initiating conversations with attractive young men. Some groups of girls intercept men on their way, ready to seize and claim them as their own. Once captured, the fortunate groom is taken home, where the bride not only forgoes the customary dowry, but also willingly contributes to the groom's family extending hospitality to his relatives. As the number of young girls in the market grows, the male counterparts find themselves with an abundance of choices. Unlike typical shopping, where one might compare a few options here, men sift through a multitude of potential matches. If a girl dares to display even the slightest hint of displeasure, the man swiftly looks away, uninterested, and continues on his way, leaving the girl heartbroken. Despite the prevalence of such bride markets, the challenges persist, making it difficult for single girls to find suitable matches. The urgency intensifies for unmarried girls in their 20s, leading them to feel the pressure of wilting away like a flower left unplucked. In the face of limited options, some girls reluctantly choose to settle for a less than ideal match, just to avoid a lifetime of solitude. Presently, numerous girls gather in crowded areas hoping to encounter a potential life partner. As a man, imagine being placed in such a scenario. How many would you choose and would you find contentment in a life in this unusual place?